Welcome to the Rusted Garden Homestead. Today I want to start a series, beginning of September, on what exactly is becoming more self-sufficient and what is modern homesteading. And the reason I want to clarify, talk about the terms is because a lot of people want to do more for themselves. They want to become more self-sufficient. And there's a lot of ways to do it. You do not have to go and buy 10 acres, go off grid, do everything yourself. The idea is to become. Become more self-sufficient, develop sets of skills that you can use to take care of yourself and your family. Now, we started you know, this video looking at just a blank space of land. Where is the best place to start if you want to become more self-sufficient, if you want to you know, turn your place into a kind of a modern homestead? It's kind of a hybrid between what life is nowadays and what life used to be. You don't have to go from A to B. The best place to start to become more self-sufficient is to take, you know, that open space of land. Maybe you're starting even smaller. You only have a patio. You only have a small deck. Um, maybe you live in the city and you just have a little bit of sunlight. You don't have to go to, you know, from having to work nine to five or more and having to buy all your products and say, hey, I'm gonna be a modern homesteader, I'm gonna be more self-sufficient, let me get out of here. You can start in that small space and learn the skills that I'm showing you now, and those skills are gardening. Vegetable gardening is a way to start your journey on becoming more self-sufficient. And that's where you start. You start at the beginning, you go at your own pace, and you learn how to do everything that you're seeing right now. If you had, you know, no experience, you've not gardened before, and some guy comes up and says, hey, you got to do this, or you're not self-sufficient, or you're not a homesteader, because you don't do this uh, gardening, you don't have your own animals, you're not making your own food, you're not uh, canning, and you're not preserving, and you're using electricity and city water, who am I? Who am I to tell you what you are? Never let somebody tell you what you are. What you start with to become more self-sufficient is a desire to change. And this series is all gonna be about becoming more self-sufficient, learning how to grow a garden like this. And it's gonna take you off the consumer grid for part of your food. As time progresses, you can learn and you can do more. So let's walk through the garden. Becoming more self-sufficient is as much a mindset, and that might be even more important, than it is a skill set. If you don't have the mindset, it's hard to develop that. You need to have confidence in yourself and don't let naysayers bring you down. Start small. The skill set you can learn. You're gonna make mistakes on the way. It can be difficult, but that's okay. We're gonna walk through three or four different types of gardens just to give you an idea of the size of where you might start. This is an introduction. Please subscribe. I'll be doing a really long series on this on all the different aspects of gardening to become more self-sufficient. For instance, in here, I am transitioning over, it's the beginning of September, over to the cool weather crops. You'll learn what they are. I have a lot of the warm weather crops still here. Right in front of me is a tomato plant. Some of the sunflowers are dying off. We have pepper plants. Right over there are some squash and zucchini. You can see that I'm growing in raised beds made of wood, of metal, there's a bed right in the earth. That's the simplest way. Look how well the plants are doing. You don't need anything fancy. Um, gardening, I would like to say, is not a beauty contest. Things don't need to look perfect. I designed my garden to be more of a combination of functional and kind of more of a haven. I like mixing up plants in a way that when I walk through it, I get a mental break. That is, that is part of becoming more self-sufficient, is taking care of your mental health, of your own mental wellness, as, and also, you know, growing your own food. More radishes coming up in different kinds of waves. That's uh, succession planting. I will be talking about that. I do have a book coming out in February on modern homestead gardening. If you want to pre-order that or think about it, you're going to learn much of what's in the book, in the series. I mean, look at these beautiful green beans. They got too heavy for the poles, but I'm gonna have green beans tonight. Beans are something you can definitely grow. You can store them, and that's something we'll talk about. 
But as you walk through this garden, it's really big. You don't have to start here. If you think you have to start with something this size and everything you're seeing now, you're going to get overwhelmed. So modern homestead gardening really, again, blends learning a skill set to become more self-sufficient with modern life. And again, we're starting with gardening, creating or growing your own food. Here's sort of a fail. I grew corn in here. It was initially really successful. I actually grew 64 ears of corn in this small space, growing beans through it to help support the stalks. And, you know, they grow together. They take care of each other in a certain way. However, a deer got in, damaged it a little bit, and then squirrels came in and just went nuts. And you can see that they ate all of my corn. That's something you're going to encounter when you are building your homestead out or when you're, you know, learning a skill set. You're going to run into pest problems and disease, and you have to learn how to figure that out. Disappointment will come. Keep that mentality in place of you can do this, which I believe you can. Um, to become more self-sufficient, you got to fight through problems. You can do that. You can container garden. That's just a small space where maybe you grow vertically. We'll talk a little bit about that. Let's go over to the smaller gardens because that's my, that might be where you want to start. So this is like maybe a 10 by 14 square plot. It's a no-dig garden where I just lay down cardboard, put down compost, grew pumpkins. That's actually, if you don't know what that is, that's an artichoke plant. This was an experiment. Tomatoes are sprawled all over the place. That's not the best way to grow tomatoes. It takes up a lot of space. We'll talk about pruning tomatoes, taking care of tomatoes, staking them. Lots of damage from deer. So one thing you have to have in mind is what kind of pests, as I was saying, do you have? Deer, one of them. So this might have to be fenced in. Well, it does have to be fenced in. This is a cold frame right in here. You could grow in a little space like this. There's, uh, I think, six pepper plants and two large tomato plants. Now, these are a little bit beat up because we're coming towards the end of the season, but there's just tons of production on there. It doesn't have to you know, be large. The other thing people are gonna talk about and you're gonna see is, do I have to be an organic gardener? The answer is, is yes but you don't have to be 100% organic. And I know people that, you know, kind of tout that on their um, forehead, so to speak, sometimes go a little bit overboard saying you have to be 100% organic. You don't. You have to become as much of an organic gardener as you can. Compost. You may not have the space for this. So if I'm here saying you have to use compost, it's all organic. If you're not using this, you're not doing it right. Again, who am I? What if you don't have the space? So maybe you have to buy compost. Or maybe you're in a small space and you have to use the chemical type fertilizers. And this is where people freak out. Chemical fertilizers aren't going to hurt you or your plants. But they're not... Uh, good for continued high use in your garden soil. It kills off the soil life. But if you're growing in containers, the chemical type fertilizers will work. Maybe that's all you can afford. Maybe you're like, okay, I'm not going to be organic to start, but I'm going to practice growing vegetables. And then you transition over to all the organic fertilizers, you transition over to compost, and you work your way up. And the reason I say that is organic gardening is great that's where we should all be and we should all be really growing our own compost but if you can't do that I don't want to put up a barrier where you're defeated already start where you're at learn the gardening skills and become a better gardener and become more organic over time and I have all kinds of different setups for organic gardening but just to take a look at it it's a lot of space maybe you don't have it Maybe you don't have time to learn those skills yet. You can learn them later. So spinning around this way is a 16 by 16 foot square foot space, so to speak, close to that. Up here, I have some transplants that I bought. I also grow probably 90% of my transplants. Um, in the book, I teach you how to grow uh, your own seed starts. How do you start seeds indoors? How do you grow your own transplants? It will save you a ton of money. And that's one goal of becoming more self-sufficient. That will also be in this series. And I have tons of videos on starting stuff indoors. You can grow 
in fabric pots. They're inexpensive. It's a great way to get started and you can see different plants in there. If you're on a budget, ask family and friends for used container pots from nurseries, like when they bring in trees or bushes or shrubs, and you can grow in those. To the right there are cool weather crops, herbs, in the back are the warm weather, super hot peppers, some sweet peppers, doing a vertical tower of strawberries in there, herbs all through here, and I just planted out this area with arugula, pak choy, or bok choy, mustard greens, baby leaf lettuces. That's all the cool weather crops. And they basically like temperatures during the day, 70 degrees, maybe lower 80s is good, but they like cool nights and they grow best in the cool weather. More green beans, beets that I'm letting overgrow that I'll actually cut that back. And you can see all the new leaves are beautiful. Those are gonna be used for salads. All right, let's go to a smaller footprint of a garden. So as we walk over there, I just want to show you this tomato plant. This tomato plant seeded itself in stone, got down there, sprawling out, a pretty cool bird feather. Um, I'm not harvesting these, so some of the cherry tomatoes are rotting on there, but they, these plants want to grow. Your garden is going to want to grow. Your vegetables are going to want to grow. They're designed to grow. This is a tomato plant with no care. You're going to get Plenty of food, even if you fail the first time and it's not as perfect as you think. So keep that in mind. Mistakes are okay, failure is okay, but a garden wants to give back to you. So here's another space you can use. All along here are a couple of uh, framed out beds. Those are raspberries and strawberries. That one plant actually looked like poison sumac or Poison oak, those leaves don't look right. Um, sometimes birds will come in and drop seeds of, you know, the ivy types that are bad for you. I'll check that out. You could grow along a fence line, cool weather crops in there again. Maybe you don't have this land. You got a small deck. Growing in different containers, different sizes for different plants to get to certain sizes. I'll teach you all about that. But you don't need a large footprint. Now, of course, this isn't going to replace going out and having to buy food, but you could learn the skills doing this on a small deck or patio, and you're going to have the skills for whenever you progress to that next step where you have more land or more space. Maybe you just have a small, sunny space. You live in the city. You don't have a lot of sunlight. You could grow in something like this. This is going to teach you about the soil, watering, fertilizing, understanding what can grow. These are different leafy greens. There's some holes in here. There's probably a worm or maybe slugs getting to this. You can learn about pests and disease. You don't need a lot to get started. I just want you to feel like becoming more self-sufficient starts with the mindset, starts with um, learning the skills, and don't get overwhelmed thinking you have to grow your own food, raise your own animals, make your own clothes, go off grid, don't use water, don't use electricity. If it's, if it's coming from a utility, you don't have to go off the grid to start. Maybe you want to get there. Maybe your modern homestead garden is going to be a hybrid where it's just gardening or maybe it's gardening and some animals. Maybe it's gardening and preserving food. You can go from a couple flower boxes, learn the skills, move up to containers, and then get to something like this. I hope you subscribe. The series will be an ongoing series for 2020, 2021, and it's gonna really teach you all you need to learn to go out and garden. Now, before I end, I wanna say, you don't have to wait for the whole series. You don't have to learn everything. The best way to get started is to really go out, get a container, get a flower box, open up some space, get your hands dirty. Start planting, see what happens, learn that way. So you're gonna learn by reading and you gotta learn by doing. I wanna congratulate you on kind of changing your perspective on life, thinking about becoming more self-sufficient and kind of moving to that modern homestead um, belief system. You can do it, go slow, and don't let anyone tell you you can't do it. Thanks for watching.